Hello friends, do you create piano videos for your YouTube channel? Have you always wanted to add a texture to add more life to your piano notes but did not know how? If so, this video is for you. Before we begin, we have a couple more tutorials coming out on how to spice up your piano videos, which include audio and video recording tips, a battle of the many visualizers out there, and many more. If my videos help you, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button now and turn on the notification bell. This will not only let you know when my next video is out, it will also support me as I try to grow my own channel. We also have a great community on Discord where we tit tat and provide helpful tips. Feel free to join us on the journey. So let's get started. Before we move on, I would humbly like to mention that I am no expert in After Effects editing. What I am sharing is my own workflow. There's probably a better and easier way of doing what I'm about to show you, and if you have tips to make this better, please write down in the comments. The process I follow to add texture is little involved, so pay attention. Also note that my footage and values will not match yours. This video will explain the process of how I do it, and you can change and input values for your own footage and your composition. As you can see, I already have my top and bottom videos lined up in the main composition. In this video, we are only looking at how to add a texture. If you need more details on how to put the entire video together, then look at the video linked up there first and then come back to this video. You can also see the piano roll currently does not have any texture. Since we will add a texture to the piano roll, let me open my top video composition where I have the footage of my piano roll. Let me open up my folder and choose a texture that I want to add to my piano roll. Notice that the texture is blue while my notes are pink. When we add a texture using the method we will see today, the color of the notes will take precedence and therefore make sure that you create a piano roll of the color that you want finally in your composition. Before you begin, take a close look at the rulers at the left of your piano roll footage. If you do not see the rulers, you can turn them on by going to the menu and then clicking on the view and then show rulers. As you can see, I have already have a ruler guide just at the top of my piano keyboard. To create a ruler guide, click your left mouse button on the top ruler and then drag down a guideline just where your keyboard starts. You can use your mouse scroll wheel to zoom in on your footage. You can then press the space bar on your computer keyboard and drag the footage with your mouse. You basically want to see how many pixels from the top your piano keyboard starts. The top of your video is always at 0 pixels and the starting point of your piano keyboard can be seen by looking at the ruler. It may not be very clearly visible in this video, but you will be able to see the pixel written along the ruler. In my case, the piano keyboard starts at 728 pixels. Let me grab a notepad real quick. Okay, so the default width of a HD video is 1920 pixels and the height for my texture in this case will be 728 pixels, which is where my keyboard starts. For best results, we will need to modify our base texture file to the size. I will use Photoshop to change the base resolution of my texture file. You are however free to use any image editing software that will permit you to save the file in another resolution. In Photoshop, I am creating a new file. The width of the file was already showing at 1920 pixels, and I modified the height of the file to be 728 pixels. I then simply drag drop the texture file in the Photoshop, and then I will replicate the file three times to fill the screen. You may not need to replicate in a similar fashion, it just depends on the original size of your texture file. All you need to see is that the texture pulls up the canvas. Once done, simply export the file as a JPEG file.
As you can see, the original texture file was square, but my new texture file is the exact size, where I will have the piano roll on my video. I will now import my new texture in my After Effects project. Then I will import this texture file in my composition. Make sure that the texture layer is above the piano roll. Using the position attribute, I will modify the texture position to first validate that I have the right size. Next, I will open the track mat on the piano roll. If you do not see the track mat, you may have to tap on the toggle switches and modes. While keeping the piano roll selected, turn on the luma mat and you will immediately see the texture being applied on your piano roll. You will notice that the keyboard disappeared but it doesn't matter as we are anyways not showing the keyboard with the piano roll. Our actual footage keyboard is already present in our main composition. Now this may be all you need and your piano roll will show the texture. However, note that the texture is stationary and not moving along with your notes, which may or may not be what you want. If you want the texture to feel as if it's imprinted on the notes, the rest of the tutorial will help. So I will start fresh with my top audio composition. As the first step, I need to find out the exact place in the timeline where the piano roll for the first note in the song starts to appear. You can zoom in and go frame by frame and find out the location where the first note of the piano roll starts to appear. Since I have removed my texture from the composition, I will drag it again in my composition. I have aligned the beginning of this texture to align with the start of the first note falling down. Then I created a keyframe and modified the position attribute such that the bottom of the texture just starts to show up from the top. Basically what I want to do is that the moment the piano roll shows to, starts to show up and starts falling down, the texture will fall down along with it, creating an illusion that the notes have a consistent texture. Next, I will drag the timeline slider to the position where the first note touches the keyboard. I will zoom in to go frame by frame to find the accurate time. Once I found out the texture where the first piano roll touches the keyboard, I will modify the position of the texture once again so that it touches the top of the keyboard. Also, since we've created a keyframe at the start, a new keyframe for this position will be created automatically. Go back to the first keyframe and check the starting point of the keyframe. In my case, it starts at 13 seconds and 25 frames. Then tap on the next keyframe and again check the position. In my case, it is at 16 seconds and 6 frames. I'm going to my composition settings so you can see that my composition is set to 30 frames per second or 30 fps. Time for some mathematics. As you just saw, composition is at 30 fps. The start of my nose falling down is at 13 seconds and 25 frames and the notes finish falling down at 16 seconds and 6 frames
So if we subtract a 2, we can figure that it's taking 2 seconds and 11 frames for the piano roll to reach from the top of the composition to the top of the piano keyboard. Now, we will add 2 seconds and 11 frames to the last keyframe, which was at 16 seconds and 6 frames. And it will come to 18 seconds and 17 frames. Let's go to this location in our timeline and create a new keyframe. For this keyframe, I will move the position of the texture once again such that the top of the texture touches the top of the keyboard. Now to test, I will go to the beginning or to the first keyframe and play my footage. I should simply see my texture falling down with the same speed as my piano roll. Next, I will go to the track mat and turn on luma mat for the piano roll. Make sure that the texture is above the piano roll. And boom, your piano roll has a texture that moves along with your notes. We are not yet done because this texture moves only for about 5 seconds and we have to create multiple layers so that it works for the entire video. To move on to expand this throughout your video, you will go to the third keyframe and press Ctrl Shift and D together to split your layer at this location. We will delete the top layer that was split and we will be left with a small clip with three keyframes. We will now simply replicate this multiple times to fill the entire composition in a manner that the texture roll is continuous. To do so, I will select the texture layer and press Ctrl D to duplicate it. On the duplicated layer, select it and press U to reveal its keyframes. We can see that all keyframes have successfully been copied onto this new duplicate layer. Now simply move the duplicated layer in such a way that its first keyframe is in the same location as the second or the middle keyframe of the previous layer. You can zoom in to masses frame by frame. If you see some gaps in between the first and the new layer, simply scale up both layers by 2-3% to fill the gap. For the rest of the video, I will simply continue to duplicate these layers to fill the entire composition. Select the topmost texture layer and press Ctrl D to duplicate it and then press U to reveal its keyframes. Align it in a similar fashion with the first keyframe of this layer matching with the middle keyframe of the layer it was duplicated from. To make it less time consuming, each time I duplicate now, I'll select all previous layers to duplicate making the process simpler as instead of copying just one layer. I'm now copying multiple layers. Before we duplicate, collapse a transform for the texture layers and just keep them visible for the layer which is the furthest in the timeline. Then selecting all three of the current texture layers, press Ctrl D once again to duplicate. Move them a little forward so that the start of the first duplicated layer 
is approximately in the same line as the second keyframe of the previous layer. Then, just select this duplicated layer and reveal its keyframe, so pressing U, and finally select all three duplicated texture layers and align the keyframes as shown. Continue to repeat this process, you can just watch me do it. At a certain point when the number of layers started to feel unmanageable, I will pre-compose them to collapse all layers and then just duplicate the entire pre-composed composition. Take a look as I perform the rest of the duplicates. It is important that you check the motion of texture after each alignment of layers. In this case, I managed to select one of the layers as I was moving and aligning which caused the scath. So I will just delete this layer. At this point, I have enough layers to make this cumbersome and difficult to duplicate any further. After aligning the set of layers, I'm going to pre-compose all of these layers to collapse them in a single layer, and then I will continue duplicating the pre-composed layer. To pre-compose the existing layers, I will select the topmost and the bottommost texture layers, right-click, and choose pre-compose. Make sure the Move All Attributes to the new composition is selected and the Access Duration checkbox is selected as well. 
Certainly, this looks so much neater. I will not duplicate this to the new composition, but wait, I don't see the keyframes anymore. No worries, but remember that the gap needed to maintain is 2 seconds and 11 frames from before. Let's take a look at where our precomposed layer ends. I will zoom in and go to the last frame of the precomposed layer. It is at 1 minute, 45 seconds, and 2 frames. From this, you'll subtract 2 seconds and 11 frames to get to the location where the duplicated layer will start. The location where we need to align the duplicated layer is 1 minute 43 seconds and 21 frames. I will copy this and go to the location in the timeline. This is where I drag and align the duplicated layer. Just making sure that the alignment is proper. We will now repeat this step just two more times. I duplicated the topmost layer and saw the previous layer ends at 3 minutes 15 seconds and 28 frames. I will subtract 2 seconds 11 frames from this to get the location of 3 minutes 13 seconds and 17 frames. I will align my duplicated layer at this place on the timeline. Repeat this process just once more to fill up the entire composition. I have now filled up the entire composition. Before I do a final pre-compose of this, I am just making sure all of the alignment is proper. Once I am satisfied, I pre-compose all of my texture layers and I will name these as Pattern. We will now simply go to Track Mat and turn on Luma Mat for the top video footage. If you are unable to see the track mat, you may have to click on the toggle switches and modes. Now when I go back to my main composition, I see that there is bleed out of the texture onto the background. To resolve this, I will create a new black solid by pressing Ctrl Y. I will then place a solid in between the top and bottom footages. Now turn off the visibility of the top layer and select the black solid. Create a mask from top of the video to where the keyboard starts. Then turn on the visibility of the top layer. And there you go friends, you have a texture that moves along with your notes. I know the process is a little involved and may look tedious, but it is still doable. It takes me only about 10 minutes to complete this entire process for my videos. If you have figured out an easier way to do this, do write down in the comments. See you in the next video, and if this has been of help, I would like to hear from you. Cheers!